All right, what's up, y'all? Diet Q&A this time. We're gonna do the training Q&A next. Uh, and then for everyone subscribing to my Patreon, we're gonna be doing the Patreon Q&A tomorrow as well. I'm gonna leave that poll uh, in a little bit after this video, actually. But this video is going to be about every single question that you could have asked about bulking, cutting, weight manipulation. A lot of these are just gonna be frequently asked questions or thoughts that you have that you haven't shared with me. I'm gonna link you to this video if you ask me X, Y, and Z about weight manipulation. So I'm literally just gonna to go to the poll that I made on my community tab. We're gonna go through each and everybody's comments that are on there currently. If, if your question didn't make it to this video, I'm literally going through all of them. Sorry about your luck. Maybe next time, but a lot of these are repeats. So first and foremost, we're gonna start with a pinned Q&A or a pinned question or comment from Chris Invictus. He says, currently I'm trying main gaining. Never took so much gear and never got so little progress. Big surplus seems better. And then I told him, thanks for the input. I'm gonna pin that. That's someone that is on, self-admittedly on tons of steroids. They're trying main gaining and they're making so little progress. And they said that a surplus is better. Food for thought for anybody that wants to try to make gains while they're lean. Even if you are genetically predisposed to do so, on gear or both, a surplus is a better option, just like I told you. But that's a non-biased third party telling you the same thing. Um, I said, if your question is, I'm a teenager, I'm skinny, and should I bulk? I said, the answer is yesterday. Mythos says, what would be the most accurate way to calculate total daily energy expenditure for determining how much I should eat for a cut or bulk? Anything I see online always varies from website to website. Fuck those calculators. Most of them are not accurate. The ones that are accurate are only as accurate as the human being that's entering data into it. So what I'll say is track what you eat for a week, track your activity levels for a week, take the average of those, and there you go, you either subtract or add from it. So say I eat 2,000, 3,000, 2,000, 2,500 and so on. My weight goes up or down accordingly. I'm not gonna be able to have uh, an accurate idea of what my fucking maintenance is because I'm eating differently each day. Standardize your calories, so you eat 2,500 each day. You get an X amount of steps each day. Okay, what did it do to your weight? You lost weight, okay. Those are your cutting calories, increase a little bit. Oh, now I'm fucking gaining weight. I gained two pounds, okay. You added too many calories, you subtract a little bit. Oh, I maintain my weight, they're your maintenance calories. Once you find your maintenance calories, if you wanna bulk, you add 200 calories to that while maintaining the same level of activity. The same number of days in the gym, the same number of steps per day, the same amount of cardio. If you wanna cut, what do I say about giga cutting? You put in the biggest calorie surplus that you can withstand without making your training, your mental acuity, or your appetite too unbearable. And that's how you do it. Um, Big Toe asks, what's your opinion on not cutting after hitting a peak bulk and instead doing a body recomposition until the desired body fat is reached? Obviously only if the goal body fat is above 12%. Is this viable for intermediates and advanced lifters? What are the possible drawbacks? Um, and then he just get, goes on to a few examples. So I think that if you reach a peak bulk, you should definitely maintain your body weight for a little bit. There's some science that goes into that. You wanna maintain the muscle you've built for a little bit, maybe even put on a little bit more with like maintenance calories, and then you enter that giga cut. Um, I think at the point where you start trying to main, main gain or body recomposition, you're getting a shittier bulking effect and a shittier cutting effect. So pick one or the other. And that doesn't matter whether you're advanced, intermediate, whatever. This, these body weight manipulation tactics are universal. They shouldn't change. Just like good pro training programming, it doesn't change a whole lot between intermediate and advanced in terms of the basics. It's just certain variables you have to change if you're stronger or weaker. Someone says, Charlie Athletic says, I'm doing exactly what you described and I'm having a blast. I absolutely, absolutely recommend this journey if you're already satisfied with the mass you have. If not, then keep bulking until you're fine. Um, it's your opinion, bro. 
Um, next question. I think personally that to your point, if you want to gain more mass, that's not you know a good a good option. But I'm sure he would agree. Uh, Barcode man says thoughts on an aggressive cut in the neighborhood of a thousand to fifteen hundred calorie deficit. It was quite manageable while taking minor strength gains for me in the past. Um, that's called giga cutting. So I, I, I commented that, and he says, "My man, Bolton gives me life. Cutting is something I want to get over with as quickly as I can." That's exactly how you want to look at cutting. You cut so that you can bulk. Some of us are going to be able to cut on huge surplus or huge calorie deficits. Our training's not going to feel super shitty, and we're just going to lose a, a lot of weight quickly. Now, some people, a giga cut for them might be 700 calories, but that's going to vary depending upon the person. I always say. The biggest calorie deficit that you can withstand, that's what you want to use. For example, when I went on my cut at the end of my bulk, and the end of my bulk was like maybe three or four months into me posting on YouTube. I was like 200 something pounds. I went from like 4,000, 4,500, sometimes 5,000 calories a day directly to 2,600 calories a day. That's an enormous surplus. So I lost a lot of weight very quickly. You're 2,600 calories is still an, an, an anabolic amount of food, meaning you can still get enough protein to support your lean, your lean body mass. Um, it's still enough carbs to get in the gym and train, and so on. It's just not enough to maintain that body weight for me, so I lost fucking fat. Didn't lose any muscle because I kept doing the same training regimen that I was doing. Most of you are not gonna be able to do that because most of you, quite honestly, are, are too fucking scared to eat that much food anyway, or too scared to gain that much body weight and just don't need to cut that much cal that many calories because you don't need to lose that much weight. A lot of y'all watching this can lead, lose 10 to 20 pounds, and then that's your cut. 20 pounds would be the most for most of you. A lot of the guys that ask me these questions, they're like 180, 170, 160 pounds, and they just need to trim a little bit, if nothing at all. So it's not really the same thing as when you have 40 pounds to lose. Paulo says, which do you think is more ideal for muscle and strength? Starting body weight of 160 plus one pound per month for two years to 184, or starting body weight plus two pounds per month for 1.5 years? It's too galaxy brain, bro. Just gain a pound or two a month. Don't overthink it. Uh, Helmet Kruisman says, do you weigh your food, especially protein raw or cooked? Thank you very much for putting in so much work and sharing so much great content. I appreciate you for uh, enjoying the, the content. It makes me feel good. Um, so pretty much, I, I'm very unga bunga when it comes to that. I'm someone where I just look at how many grams for people to use grams, but how many ounces there are in like the portion of meat that I bought. So if it's like 19 ounces, I'm gonna divide it up into however many portions based after something I Google. Google is your fucking friend. So might divide that into four pieces. 19 divided by four is like a little bit more, a little bit less than five ounces per. And then however many calories is, is how much meat I'm gonna have with that particular meal. I don't really standardize the amount of protein I have in each meal. I just get some. I account for the calories in it. I use an accordant amount of carbs and like fat sources, and I just fit it into my daily calories. The, the weighing shit is for the birds. The fucking meat is already weighed. Just divide it up. No, it's not going to be exactly the exact same amount of ounces, but if you're going to eat all of it, I hope you're going to eat all of it throughout the week. The average amount of calories is still going to add up to what you accounted for. Javier Villanueva says, I've been bulking since December and I was originally skinny fat. I've gained significant size and I was wondering if it's a good idea to cut around the end of March. I'm currently 180 at 5'9". So if you've been bulking since December, I, I hope you mean like last December, like December a year ago, like one calendar year ago, not like literally a month ago. If you've only been bulking for a month, and you've gained significant size, your your surplus is too big. But if like, I think what you're saying is you've been bulking for about a year, I would say you're, you're 180 at 5'9". That would be, I'm 5'11", every 10 pounds. 
every inch is two pounds. You'd be around 200 pounds if you were my height. Subtract some muscle. I'm doing some galaxy brain shit right now, but you may be ready for a cut. Uh, that's dependent on you though, bro. If you feel like it's time to cut, you put in your work for a year with your bulk, go ahead. Um, Versace Jr. asks or says at 25 to 30% body fat after bulking for a year, you bulked too hard. You bulked, you bulked way too hard. Unless you, you know, you don't care about giga bulking. Um, should I try to recomp for a year? No, cut, get your cut. Giga, giga cut down to like 15% and then lean bulk this time. Don't, don't, don't do that again. Um, you're not gonna lose any mass, bro. I mean, at that body weight, you're you cutting down to 15% body fat. You can probably still continue to make uh, strength gains and muscle gains with that amount of body fat. Nick Johnson, I'm a novice lifter, been lifting for two months, 5'7", 175, and I think around 20 to 25% body fat. Should I cut recomp? No. It, okay, so if you're legitimately 25% body fat, there's absolutely nothing wrong with losing 20 pounds of fat and then using that as a buffer to bulk. So this is going to address everybody that has this similar question, okay? If you are morbidly obese, and I'm not like, it's a medical term, just like fucking, what's his name? Co Coach Greg likes to say, I'm not saying that you're fat, it's a medical term, blah, blah, blah. If you're medically morbidly obese, it's okay to lose 20 pounds of fat. You're not, as a novice lifter, two, two months in the gym, you're still gonna be able to make strength gains. The point of encouraging people to lean bulk or is to speak to people that are skinny or skinny fat, that are like 12, 13% body fat because they have no muscle, they just look skinny fat, you know? If you're legitimately 25% body fat, slim down some chub and then lean bulk. When you lean bulk as a newer lifter, your body fat percentage is gonna go down as you accumulate muscle. Um, I don't know how to say your name, bro, but I'm uh, 193 centimeters, weigh about 100 kg. That's like 220 something pounds, I think. Um, I've started training recently and I'm unsure as to how to get rid of the skinny fat look I have right now. Do I get even fatter and cut in the future or do I begin below maintenance from the get go? Same thing, if you're morbidly obese, lose a little bit of weight, make room for that bulk. Don't look at it as body fat percentages. Think about bulking and cutting as you cut enough of a buffer to make room for a year long bulk, a year, two, year or two where you're gaining a pound or two a month. Some of that's gonna be muscle, some of it's gonna be fat, but you're not gaining pure fat. Like this, we, we need to erase this idea that when you bulk, you're just gonna automatically get fat. I've been in a calorie surplus now for two months, two or three months, I've gained a pound and a half. You know, some of it's fat, some of it's muscle. I, I still looked ripped, you know what I mean? So you're not you're not gonna get fat, you know, cutting a little bit and then lean bulking. Um, a John Animal, I don't know how to say your name, bro, I apologize. I'm not familiar with this, with this type of name. But he says, he or she says, for me personally, I find bulking and cutting really unsustainable. I know the process is way slower with main gaining, but surely you should be doing what you can do most sustainably without cheating or crashing. I also didn't get go on big deficits or surpluses, max 200 calories either way when I was cutting or bulking. Impossible. Impossible. I I'm just gonna give you some tough love, bro. You if you added one or 200 calories to your diet one way or the other, you wouldn't be able to tell in terms of your appetite, your energy levels, so on. You're going to eat one to 200 calories different eating the same fucking foods every day just by virtue of, you know, the, the density of the food, the amount of water in it, 
the accuracy of your, your tracking. So there is absolutely no fucking way that you were only eating in a 100 calorie deficit and you couldn't sustainably do it one way or the other. I'm gonna advise that you hire a dietitian, get someone to work closely with you to show you how to measure your foods, show you how to accurately track these things. Because if you main gaining, for example, what what does that mean? Which definition of what are you using? Some one of them is a small surplus. One of them is training in a calorie deficit. Like which are you using? In either event, you're going to have to have some slight amount of calorie ma manipulation, which you've said that you cannot do sustainably. So get your shit in order, man. Go to a, go to your doctor. Go to your dietitian. Get on a good meal plan with someone who's a professional because you need you need help. Um. Ali HK says, hey coach, how do you prevent fast weight gain in a bulk? Clean bulk, like a clean, clean bulk, if you're not tracking your calories. Track your calories. Um, Edward Harmon the fourth says, how quickly and for what duration should an ideal lean bulk last? Speaking from the context of an elite early intermediate, or excuse me, an early intermediate power lifter over 200 pounds. Um, so here's the thing, buddy. Um, depends on how competitive you are. So if you're, you have a real shot at getting uh, like a world record in your weight class or topping out at first place at Raw Nationals or something like that, stay in your weight class to achieve that. But after that, grow into a bigger weight class. Um, You said you're 200 pounds. As an early intermediate power lifter, you still have a lot of strength and size to put on. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be married to that weight class. You're likely through your process of gaining muscle, losing weight, and so on, going to end up in a slightly smaller weight class if you continue to min max what you're doing. So just eating a surplus, man, and then make a cut, do a cut to make a buffer for your surplus, and then wherever you end up is where you end up. Lots of elite powerlifting coaches we tell you the same thing stop worrying so much about where you end up in terms of weight class and just train eat well and you end up where you end up and then once you start to maximize your efficacy in a weight class hopefully you're doing pretty well to be able to have a competitive shot at winning raw nationals or worlds or whatever um stygian Bjergsens. I don't know how to say your name, man. I apologize. Only recently found this channel, but glad, glad I wasn't seduced in the main gaining. I, I'm glad you weren't as well. What I just did was bulk decently hard and went from 67 to 78 kilograms since I started lifting eight months ago. And I can't imagine why any skinny teenager like myself would main gain instead of this. Right on, bro. Keep up the good work. FSFS, FS. I'm skinny fat after bulking up too fast after an injury. Would eating at maintenance be okay or should I just cut back down and bulk up slowly? Sorry if this is an annoying question has been asked a hundred times already. Um, if you're morbidly obese, make room for a, bulk, a nice slow bulk with a cut. You saw what you did wrong the first time. You bulked too quickly. Just lean bulk this time, bro. Have patience. Sparta Prankster. What do you think about using meal replacement protein shakes on a cut that would meet protein goals? If you need to, sure. I mean, I'm a big believer in getting the calories however you need to, provided that you're getting in enough vegetables, fiber, and electrolytes. Um, if this will help you reach your calories, go for it. Just don't buy those mass gainers. Make your own mass gainer at home. It's not hard. You get like a carb source of some kind, a fat source of come some kind, some sort of milk, some sort of protein powder, and then you just make your own. It's a lot cheaper. Gaining too weight, gaining weight too fast in the first month of bulking. A pound and a half per week average. Lower food or activity. Lower food or increased activity. For context, I'm 174 at 5'9". Good work. I appreciate the content. I appreciate you enjoying the content, bro. Keep 
keep uh, keep leaving me your good feedback. I appreciate you. Um, what I'm gonna say is you're answering your own question. So you know that you're gaining weight too fast. It's over a pound per week. What you need to do is look at your diet because you're not gaining weight because of your activity level. I mean, that's part of it. If you, you can outwork a, a bad diet to an extent, but the problem is, is that you're just eating way too much. You're eating way too much. So if you had a 500 calorie surplus each day over maintenance, you would only gain a pound uh, per week, maybe a little less than that. You're gaining almost a pound and a half, meaning you have like an 800 calorie surplus per day. You need to fix that. So I would go from 800 to maybe a 400 calorie surplus, and then maybe walk 5,000 more steps to take away another uh, 200 calories, and then you're at a 200 calorie surplus. I always say diet on as much food as possible. So um, that's if you're cutting, but just for you to be able to, I guess, eat more food, I guess my point is, is diet in one way or the other, diet on as much food as possible. So if you can eat a little bit more and then move a little bit more as well to kind of circumvent that, do that. But just don't do anything too extreme. Like don't eat a thousand more calories and then try to eat, do 800 calories worth of cardio to make up for that. You have an eating disorder if you do that. Um, Yadav says, been lifting for about three years, gained 14 kg, and now quite strong being 64 kg, but I still look small as heck. Any advice? Shit, man. I'm there with you. I'm 5'11", 173 pounds, and ripped. Very strong, especially for my weight. Um, so I feel you with n not quite feeling as big as your lifts. Um, if you're still small, dude, keep bulking. It is what it is. Keep gaining weight. What did, what did Rich Piana say? Um, try eating more fucking calories. Um, I'm pretty sure that your name is some like meme type spelling, like maybe 4chan. You're a regular commenter, and I appreciate you, but it's N N triple three O X. I don't know, maybe that's like a face or something, but cheers, Coach P. Have you ever experienced individuals who don't gain strength on bench and OHP even though they are on your program and sleep well and are gaining weight slash bulking? If so, what could be the reason? That's impossible, that doesn't happen. Um, if that does happen, they are maybe sandbagging somewhere else. Um, it's always like a mindset thing in that case. You just don't, you don't train and have all your ducks in a row and not make progress of some kind. You're sandbagging somewhere else and that's just more of a coaching thing. Ryan Knox says, I'm 19, been bulking for 18 months. Good shit, went from 175 to 210. I'm about six foot one to six foot two. My plan is to cut for two to three months and get to about 185, blah, 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 and lean bulk from there. Is this a good idea or just a waste of my time? Thanks, no, dude, like, especially looking at your profile picture, you're, you're, in a good, you're in good shape, man. So I would just, you know, what you did is exactly what I would recommend. You bulk for long as fuck. You did it for 18 months. I say at least a year, I say up to two years. And you want to cut real quick down to like 185 to make room for another lean bulk. That's exactly what you want to do. Cut to make room for a lean bulk. Okay. Rinse and repeat. Um, Yatterix says, is an eight month slow cut too long if the goal is to go from 28% body fat to 12% body fat? Also, how long should a person wait to start a lean bulk again after finishing a cut? Um, Maintain for, I'll answer your second question first. Maintain for maybe a week, two weeks, just your, your cut body weight. You're gonna gain a little bit of weight just by virtue of you eating more calories. So that's gonna get stored as glycogen and a little bit of water. You might gain two to five pounds of just pure carbs and water. Maintain that for about two weeks. I went from, I immediately went from like 168 to like 172 or so. And then, and then held that for a little while as I 
and introduced a slight calorie surplus, but you really just want to get that catabolic state out of the way as soon as possible. So as soon as you're done, maintain bulk. Now, you're 28% body fat and you want to go to 12% body fat. I would just reduce that a little bit. So what I would recommend is lose 10% body fat um, and then lean bulk from there. This message is no longer available because it was unsent by the sender. Y'all, please don't do that. All right, I'm gonna get back to your question in a second, but I'm gonna timestamp this. If you send me a message and I don't get to it right away, I'm not ignoring you, okay? I have close to 10,000 followers. All of y'all have questions. I get to you when I get to you. I don't ignore anybody. If I don't see it at first, please do not do that weirdo shit. Please, and if you're watching this now, slap on the wrist. Just ask the question again, bro. Double text me, I don't care. But anyway, eight months is a long time to be in a deficit, bro. So what I would recommend is cut for four, maintain for a few, you know, like a month or two, and then cut real quick again. So like cut for four months, maintain for about two so you're maintaining at about 18 to 20 percent body fat you can still make gains that's high enough in body fat for you to be able to do that and then cut again but keep in mind that your goal in this period from when you're like morbidly obese to getting down to like a you know a athletic body fat range your goal is not strength gaining right now your goal is to get into a normal body fat range so that you can strength train effectively the effective strength training range is like 10% body fat to like 15% body fat is what I would tell people to cut down to and then lean bulk to like 20, 22%. You're going to look good. Um, and that's that. So just get it over with as quickly as possible. Um, Zam says, it seems to be that whenever I start taking protein shakes, my phosphorus and creatine levels go through the roof. It's happened twice now and I've had to stop taking them for months on end and I'm starting to plateau hard like right now. I'm not sure. What are you talking about, bro? You're, look, you're, 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 you're looking at it too deep, man. So if you're talking about a plateau in terms of your weight gain, your protein has nothing to do with that. Eat more calories. But if you're talking about a plateau with your training, Again, the, the amount of protein that you're eating doesn't really, you know, if you're saying you're, it's plateauing because you're taking too much of it, you're, you're overthinking shit, bro. Get your shit in order. Um, Machado says, what are your bulking cheat code snacks, if any? Been eating hella yogurt between meals and curious if you have any other suggestions. Anything high in calories that you can make real quick that's cheap. Uh, Dreamer KGM, your channel is a mine of gold. If you have any good idea of your maintenance cows, how many cows deficit would you recommend for a serious cut? Giga cut, so that's gonna be dependent on you. The biggest deficit that you could stand below 500 calories, that's sustainable for you. Reagan says, um, bulk slash cut or recomping? I'm doing kickboxing competition during in season. Where I need to be a certain weight class. Okay, so you need to maintain your weight. But I'm lifting on the side and I want to be stronger and bigger. You're in your in season right now. Save that for the off season. Maintain your weight right now. Do enough in the weight room for you to be able to maintain the strength that you hopefully focused on building in the last off season. If you didn't, I'm sorry, you're shit out of luck. Just maintain what you got and focus on kickboxing. You can't have both things at, at the same time. You have to have one or the other. Um, so you, you're, whatever strength you have is what you have. You can try to gain more. I'm not gonna lie to you. If you push the weight training too hard with kickboxing, you are going to hurt yourself. You're gonna tear something. You're gonna break something. Just pump the brakes. Finish your, finish your kickboxing season. Have fun. And then in your off season, that's when you focus on your strength, strength training, okay? So it's phases that you have, no matter what kind of athlete that you have. You have your off season where you focus on strength, strength and conditioning, 
sports specific capacities and then your you know, your season. So work with a strength and conditioning coach next time. Good luck, Matt. Have fun. Kickboxing is bad eyes. <clears throat> Nahal Singh says, kind of a dumb question, I think, but I, should I be lowering my calories by like 100 on non-training days? No. Do the same deficit each day. Uh, or same surplus. Whatever surplus or deficit you have, maintain it each day. Make it real simple. Haymaker, okay, I've been trying to seriously put pounds on for a couple months now. I'm 6'3". Started at 170 in November. Weighed in at 190 today. Ooh, good, good shit, bro. You gained 20 pounds. Good shit. Getting around 2,500 calories a day. So one thing is, is that you're definitely eating more than 2,500 calories. Um, what I would say is, is that you definitely have room to put on a little bit more weight because you're six foot three. Even at 200 pounds, that would you know that would still look more on the the skinnier side. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep training hard. I don't think you're doing anything wrong. You gained 20 pounds since November. What I would say is, if you continue to gain weight at this, and you know, start to notice that you can't see your dick anymore, you, you went too far. So maybe at around 210. 200 pounds, you start to look at your calories and then make the surplus a little smaller where maybe you're just gaining about two pounds per month. Um, he, he later goes on to say, I realized I've been eating over 3,500, okay? It's just like I said. Nick Vane says, how did, how did you balance daily long distance running PT and expectations to be lean and have fast run times while in the military while lifting four times per week recovery wise? Military PT ain't shit, bro. Like, do you know how many like fat people were in the military? You really only have to focus on running the minimum run to not get kicked out of the military. Like, you don't need to be this this PT stud that's just a top physical condition at all time. People get their fucking numbers fudged all the fucking time. They get their measurements fudged. They get their tape measurements fudged. So on, like. It really ain't no thing at all. And you don't have to have very much conditioning to run the minimum run times in any, in any branch, except for probably the Marines, where you gotta run three miles in a row. Uh, SAF Athletics, Adam Ogilvy. When I started lifting as a teenager 30 years ago, Cough was no debate. We just bulked up and trained our asses off. Uh, there's a joke here I'm missing, bro. Sorry, I'm tired. It's cold as fuck in here. I got this coat on. No one cared about a six pack. We just cared about being big and strong, and I still do. Right on. That's some real ass shit. Joey Vaughn Felt. How lean should you be when you start a bulk, and how fat should you let yourself get before you start bulking? Make room for a bulk. If you feel like you're too fat now, make room about 20 pounds at most, 10 pounds at a minimum, and then lean bulk for a year. There's no set number of body fat percentage to it. Rafsan Riasat. If one is above 20% body fat, is bulking necessary? Same as the last question. Can teens bulk at a faster rate due to adults? Can teens bulk at a faster rate than adults due to hormones and whatnot? Yeah, maybe. I mean, your hormonal profile is higher, but don't worry about it, just bulk. L. Jeremiah, do your periods of cutting or bulking impact your persona? I just, I just said something like, I just walk around with my shirt off more if I'm bulked up. Uh, there's no real change, or at least there shouldn't be if you're fucking natural. Unless you get really, really, really lean then maybe, but for the most part, your persona shouldn't change unless you're fucking weirdo. Um, Francisco Coleman. Hi, this is my first time posting here. Welcome, appreciate you, enjoy your stay. My question is, should I build a strength base first before then go into athletics? My strength is not the best, I can't squat one plate. Yeah, bro, just train, get a little bit strong in your off season and then play your sport, rinse and repeat. Um, if you have any specific questions, please let me know. 
IG says, thoughts on Giga cutting as an overweight teenager would fuck up growth or hormone levels or something. You're a teenager, man. Like, if you're fucking morbidly obese, can't see your dick and balls, lose a little bit of weight. It's okay. I did the same thing when I was a teenager. Look at me now. I didn't, my, my growth hormone, my growth wasn't fucked up. I'm 5 foot 11. I'm jacked. You see? So there's, there's no there's no shame in losing the fat, but just make that what it is. Don't spend all of your teenage years half-ass cutting and breaking yourself in the gym in a certain a deficit. Lose the fat. Then when you lose enough fat, lean bulk. Uh, Lashka Lakey, how many calorie surplus is ideal to optimize hypertrophy? 200 or so, two or 300. Larson Levius, opinions on mini cut or body recall, it's a waste of time. Testosterone, man, I miss Koga as the main character. Yeah, me too. Uh, I said Oma, master race though. Um, Innovation 99, how long to lose 20 pounds? Uh, it's about a pound and a half a, a week, maybe. However, whatever that math breaks down into. Keep your training the same as your as your uh, your bulk though. You might have to just switch out certain exercises for less fatiguing exercises. Maintain your intensity. You might have to downgrade the volume a little bit, but if you take away a little volume, you're not gonna lose any muscle from that. Meme machine, what are some underrated foods that are calorie efficient? Look at your food labels, y'all. Google. I, 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 I appreciate y'all for asking some of these questions, but look at your food labels, man. It's all amazing. Um, on one side, you want to bulk up and improve lifts. On the other side, you want to be as light as possible. He's someone that is, they say they have a good shot at winning raw nats at their weight class. Do that first, but after that bulk. Um, Ricky the Ricky, 226. How important is diet? compared to training on YouTube fitness, you get all kinds of answers and opinions. So here's my opinion on that. Um, diet should be used to support your training and you should hit hydration, electrolytes, minerals, and veggies. Anything else other than that, it's fucking minutia. It's 0.001% benefit. The training though is very important though. So if you're not giving yourself the right stimulus, you could have an optimized diet, you're gonna be a fucking DL. Junaid Jaffrey says, so I weigh 64 kilograms and 5 foot 11 bulk. I'm not even going to read the rest of your question. Um, my question is how to transition from a bulk into a cut. Lower your calories. One is a lean bulk, almost the same thing as doing a body recomp. Oh, this is, yeah, what's up, bro? This is, yeah, yeah, we, we, we've talked. Um... So a lean bulk is not really the same thing as a body recomp, just because with a body recomp, your focus is on not gaining weight. It's more so turning your fat into muscle. So you're staying relatively the same weight and replacing fat with muscle. With, whereas with a lean bulk, you accept that over this amount of time, you're gonna gain maybe 20 pounds and maybe like a third of that will be muscle. So one is based on gaining, one is based on maintaining what you got. And then two, he asks, how do you perform a lean bulk and a body recon? You, they're not, they're like opposite things. So you have to really pick one or the other. For you specifically, since with your training, you're, you're wanting to lose fat. If you're above 20% body fat, I would say for the first, maybe two or three blocks of your training, you're gonna be able to run it as usual till you get to about 17, 18% body fat. And then that's when you're gonna main, wanna maintain your weight for a little bit. That's just to support your training. After that, when you rerun your training, what I'm gonna say is, that's when if you want for about two months or so because you've just finished your cut, you could maintain for the first two blocks of you rerunning the program. And then after that, 
hit me up and then we'll, we'll get you squared away with like a cutting plan. So this is uh, Safe Ali. I'm sorry if I said your name wrong, bro. It's no disrespect at all. CNI says he's pretty strong too. He deadlifts like two, 260 kilograms, if I'm not mistaken. CNI says 190 pounds and 20 plus percent body fat. Is it time for a small cut to remove the fluff? Been bulking for a year. I'm scared to lose gains though. Just cut real quick, bro, and then make room for a bulk again. That's exact. You're exactly where you want to be. So cut. You're going to lose a little strength. You're not going to lose any muscle. Then bulk again. And anything that you lose, you're going to get back very quickly, like in two weeks. Justin Taylor. Uh, what's the difference between spending more money on high quality macros slash spending less on supplemental vitamins and minerals versus cheap quality macros and spending more on supplements? Well, one, the quality of your macros is going to be better more than likely if you're spending your money on quality produce, quality cuts of meat, quality grains, and so on, than if you were to go cheapo on your foods that you're eating and then just buy the most expensive su supplements. The supplements really ain't gonna be the best for you either way, bro, quite honestly, so. What I would say is you can definitely eat well on a budget. Just go to the farmer's market, go to Aldi, some sort of supermarket where the prices are low. If you're in the military, go to the commissary uh, and you're good to go. Instant Jeff, I'm 16, six foot one, 85 kg. And I was going to the gym for like a cool three months, but then I kind of stopped. I think my boyfriend, oh shit. I'm sorry, bro, you're, you're not, I, I don't know if you're gay or not, but I read this as my boyfriend just because of the way you wrote, you, you worded it. But I think my body fat is like 19%, but not a lot of muscle, so should I recall? No, you need to cut. If you're truly 19% body fat at six foot one, I doubt that you are, but if you are, lose 10 pounds and then lean more. Dividend King. Not a question, but it's kind of cumbersome to lean bulk while working manual labor. Okay, so this is a little bit stickier of a situation. What I would say is, if you're losing weight and you feel like you're in a surplus, eat more. Okay, so he, he I, I say, I would suggest that if you're in a normal 500 surplus, increase that depending upon if your work really kicked your ass or not. He says, I tried it at first, I didn't gain anything, even lost weight, and then bam, gained one kilogram a week for three weeks. So I find for myself staying at a small surplus and adjusting calories and monitoring my weight works best. That's kind of what I'm saying to you, bro. So part of your job, your cortisol, your cortisol levels are gonna be very high because your job is very stressful. So here's how I'm gonna tell you to look at it, bro. So stop looking at the scale so much and look at how your training is going. If your diet is supporting your training and you're not necessarily gaining scale weight, that doesn't mean you're not in a surplus or you're not gaining muscle. Your weight gain is gonna fluctuate depending upon water levels to begin with. If your training is being supported, you're doing a good job. If you notice that your weight is going down or staying the same and your training feels like shit, you're likely in a calorie deficit and it's just not manifesting on the scale. You're maybe losing fat and then retaining water because of the cortisol levels, you work manual labor. In that case, you need to increase your calories. You may notice that when you increase your calories, damn, I just lost some weight. That's from water weight more than likely. What I'm gonna recommend is take what I'm saying, just food for thought, refer to a dietitian. They're gonna put you with a more structured plan than what I could just communicate to you now, because I don't know what you eat. I don't know your exact activity levels. I don't know your background, medical history, so on. CNS gains. Where does someone, you, you worried this weird, bro. Where does someone bulking draw the line between eating more or just using it as an excuse to eat more unhealthy food? Some use bulking as an excuse to eat trash, and there's plenty of foods that spike insulin but also have nutrients. I agree. You have to be, just be objective. That's where you draw the line at. 
Robbie Robbie says, hmm, if you are gaining weight yet your body fat percentage is dropping, is it even a bulk or efficient bulk for a novice? Yeah, that just means you're gaining muscle. Um, S, I lost the question. Oh, here we go. SWJ says, I don't have time to cook nor that much place in my fridge to meal prep. I'm a student. I also have a allergy to peanuts. Do you have any tips on snacks or foods I can eat during lecture or while studying? So fuck that bullshit excuse, first of all. Um, get yourself like a pressure cooker or a rice cooker or something like that, something where you can stick fucking rice, roast beef, vegetables, season that bitch up, stick some potatoes in there. You can set it in the morning before you go to class, put it on a timer, and then it'll stay warm after it's done cooking. Fuck that bullshit talking about you don't have time to eat. I reject that. No fucking excuses. If you don't have that much time, or if you don't have that much room, buy a mini fridge, you know? If you don't have a job, get a part-time job and buy a mini fridge. Um, basically, I'm not gonna help you navigate a situation, uh, a, a problem that has a very simple solution. Get a rice cooker, get a mini fridge. You don't need to store really anything in your fridge, but meat you're, you're gonna and you then whatever meals that you prep so just make make time and room for it god i miss koga yeah me too opinion on carb intake for recovery carbs should be as high as possible this is a og subscriber adric grew i didn't forget you you wrote a comment once saying i hope you don't forget us or just don't like stop responding to our comments when you get more subs i remember you bro and i remember you saying that i always say keep your carbs as high as you can carbs are super anabolic the more the better rishi cash yeah can we still make gains while consuming less protein yes Ice Prototype J, how do you get a relatively accurate measurement of your body fat percentage? You just eyeball it and compare it to people who did get their body fat measured. Bert Ernie, do you eat a high number of protein on a bulk? You can if you want to. Tim Burke, trying to build muscle slash clean bulk while doing a gains goblin sport like kickboxing or Muay Thai. You have an off season and an in season, okay? So if you're just a Muay Thai and a kickboxing enthusiast and you're not actually competing, you need to make an, uh, a needs versus wants analysis. So if you wanna be the best at kickboxing, you need to structure an in-season and off-season. If you're just doing both, do the least amount of kickboxing or Muay Thai that you can do while being able to train or vice versa. You have to prioritize one or the other is what I'm saying to you. Felipe Albuquerque, is there a correlation between bulking and insulin resistance? I say to an extent, he says, but it will return to normal. Talk to your doctor. Um, Santa Aries, can we bulk on chocolate, popcorn, jam, cornflakes, etc., or will it just make us fat? A calorie surplus that's too big makes you fat. SAR, minimum amount of time that should be spent bulking a year or two. Sam Schmall, how do you get about cutting the least painful way? Just fucking do it. There's far more painful things that you can do in life. JT, why cut slash maintain if you can just perma bulk? True, I mean, giga bulking is gonna get you the strongest and biggest, the fastest. Uh, Miklos Medjesi, how do you properly track calories with minimal effort? Track your calories, it's not hard. You eat mostly homemade stuff, measure your food as you're making it. If, you know, your wife or a parent cooks for you, you cook for yourself. I know main gaining is haram, but I'm slightly overweight. Should I do it? No, cut. Samuel Alvarez, slightly losing my skinny fat physique, my man boobs. <laughs> um, just train, bro. You're looking at it too much. You're looking deep into it. How do you bulk? You eat in the calorie surplus. Uh, 
Dragoon history, Dragoon history. I'm building muscle, but I'm packing some extra pounds, 20-ish, should I train? Lose 20 pounds and then lean bulk. Uh, accommodating body weight exercises and weight gain. You don't accommodate, you just train. If you're lean bulking, you're not gaining that much weight that much anyway. So if you're gaining a pound, that shouldn't impact your performance too much. You should get stronger in an absolute sense with your weighted calisthenics as you continue to bulk. That's like asking, if I gain 30 pounds, is my squat gonna go down in terms of pounds I put on the bar? No, it should go up. But when you talk about push-ups and dips and suddenly these people get anxiety. A Keith Gunnakar, what about body recall? No. Um, Yvonne Merrick, so wait, clean bulk doesn't work. I never said that. Uh, IG, doesn't need to be in a vid, but I'm switching to push-pull legs and I don't know how to enter values. And, oh, I addressed this. So he's saying, all right, bro, so this will be its own timestamp, but for anyone that says, I don't interpret this, I don't know this, first of all, read the frequently asked questions. Almost everyone that gives me these frequently asked questions didn't read the frequently asked questions, so please read them. Um, so what you need to do is you need to download the Google Sheets app or have Google Sheets on your phone or your computer or whatever. Have that app so that you can open the document, make a copy of the document, it's read only. When you click into the program, it's gonna say, notate to calc backgrounds. You delete that entire cell, including the part that it says, notate the backgrounds. So, so, so you delete everything in there, the letters and everything. Don't delete anything where there's an equation. So if you click into the one below that, you're gonna see that there's an equation. Don't delete that one, don't touch it. Notate, delete everything here. Say you did 200 as a top set, you put in 200, bam, it calcs your back downs. You have another cell that tells you to do the same thing. You follow the notation, if it says two reps in reserve, you, whatever weight you did for that, boom, bam, 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 bam. It's, you, it's not just like you put in one thing and it just calculates the program. Just read it, follow the directions, and have fun. How to body recomposition. Not answering that. Tips for cutting, eat less calories. Um, how much protein, carbs, and fat per kg to grow? 100 fucking protein per day. You don't need very much. There's fringe benefits in terms of protein intake, like say you tore something, you eat a little bit more protein, it's gonna help with your soft tissue recovery a little bit better. That might be bro science, but it's always worked for me. I've heard it come from the mouths of people with a lot more experience than me in the nutrition aspect. So, I mean, anecdotally, it's worked for me, but just at a minimum, you don't need as much protein as you think you do or that you've been told that you do. So that's been the diet q and I'm going to take a little time to timestamp this. If you have any questions, please read the fucking timestamps or watch the video. Just watch the video. If your question is bulky and the answer is yes, y'all have a good one.